Good morning. Welcome to worship, all of you here in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us via Armstrong Cable or through our Facebook page or on our website. So here we are, the second Sunday of May. It really feels like it, doesn't it? Um, the second Sunday of May in this day that we call Mother's Day. We enter this service of worship acknowledging that this day holds many, many thoughts, memories, and emotions. I'm reminded of the words from the Apostle Paul in Romans 12 when he says that considering the marks of a true Christian, we rejoice with those who rejoice and we weep with those who weep. And so this day is a day of rejoicing for many with loving families and whether your mother is living or gone on to the church triumphant, uh, this day of blessing. We also know it, that it is a day of sorrow for many. Uh, those who have lost a child, have lost their mother, or in a situation where they never really knew the love of a loving mother. In that case, we weep with you. So if your family has found healing and reconciliation this year, we offer a prayer of thanks as we begin this service. If your family is still separated in any way by death or division of uh, all kinds, we offer our prayers of intercession. So as I say uh, almost every Sunday, whoever you are, however you are, Wherever you are, you are welcome here in this time of worship at Stone. Our call to worship this morning comes from Paul's words to uh, the church in Rome. And I read to you from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. This uh, gives us the parameters of our life together, how we might be. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So we come together that our love might be encouraged through this time of worship that we would go forth today to bear marks of a true Christian. So we begin this service with that call, and now with our opening hymn that Jim will provide to us, Now Thank We All Our God.
up until a few, few years ago, I only ever thought of that as a Thanksgiving song, and it is one of my favorite uh, hymns for the Thanksgiving season. But uh, then I started to notice how that first verse, it says, and from our mother's arms, that it feels today like a wonderful Mother's Day hymn. So children's sermon this morning, you know, I always wish our little people could actually be up here with me and those who might be joining us at home. I'm going to ask all of you kids and grown-ups to do something for me. It's not hard, but you're going to have to close your eyes, and I will as well, to (laughs) to model what I'm asking you. I want you to close your eyes wherever you are, However old you are, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to bring to mind the face of someone you love or someone you have been loved by. Can you see them? Can you see what expression is on their face? With your eyes closed, can you see the love in their eyes? Can you hear their voice? Can you feel the touch of their hand? Again, one who is still with you or one who has gone on. They're right there. They're right there with you. Hmm. And now open your eyes. Did it almost make you cry? Or did it? (laughs) It did me. Those people, the ones that we have loved and been loved by, are God's presence in our midst. Right? Love's still with us. That love doesn't go away. Where it was the love of a mother, a grandmother, an aunt, a father, a friend, a child. If we could draw these pictures, what we would be drawing is God's presence with us. God makes God's love real to us in one another. This week we have a special music piece put together by the pictures that you, many of you have offered up, that Jen has set to music. Pictures of women in your life, moms or grandmas, aunts or friends, people that showed you whether they were your uh, mother by name or not, who shared with you God's love. And so now turn your eyes and your ears and your hearts to this morning's special music. She put the music in me. It started with rockaby Comforting when I cry all in her own style Then popcorn before my eyes Turning frowns upside down into smiles The songs of the birds on high Looking at the blue, blue sky The wind as it rushes by Then leading me, guiding me Walking beside me, she helped me to walk in the light and she built my house on a rock and she lives all that she taught and she is all that a woman should be she put the music in me I knew child's prayer answering from up above she gave like a little stream and i was her sunbeam i felt my savior's love i saw her kneel and pray with our family every day listening 
to each whispered word. Gentle indeed in thought, all the things Jesus taught, following prompting she heard. And she lives to search, ponder, pray, and she gives every day. So her thanks will always be thanks indeed. She put the music in. He made the tiny wings of each little bird that sings in the leafy treetops on high. And all creatures, great and small, I know God made them all because of her sweet lullabies. And she a star shining bright and helps me to choose the right and she gives me the hope of a life yet to be she put the music in she is so good to me god the father he sent her to me and she taught me to lift up my voice and sing she put the music in me. She put the music in me. She put the music in me. Thank you, Jen, and all of you who offered up your pictures and those for whom these uh, women still remain alive in your hearts. Uh, that piece will show at the end of worship this morning, and it's also going to be available on our website and our Facebook page. Ah, and so now we turn this morning to our scriptures for this day. Over these uh, last few weeks since Easter, um, we have been using, we have been just looking at stories of uh, Jesus in his post-resurrected life, but this morning we go back to a Good Friday, to Holy Week, to Jesus on the cross. Just really three short verses. Meanwhile, Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. In light of that scripture, or uh, possibly better said, to frame that scripture, just a couple of verses from Romans chapter 8. Uh, beginning in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so may we also be glorified with him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, on this morning, 
in this time of worship, thank you for the spirit of adoption that you completely have claimed us as your children, as heirs. Mm. Fill us. Fill us with this wonder. Amen. In the stories that we have been reading over these last few weeks, these uh, post-resurrection stories, we have seen and felt and heard about Jesus in his glory. The story, those few verses you just heard this morning, are about a very human Jesus. A Jesus in so much pain. The Jesus hanging on a cross. This Jesus suffering, who sees his mother, right? Who sees his mother, and he, I'm sure, had profound compassion on his mother, who was experiencing this loss, and he didn't want her to be alone. Talk about love, right? He didn't want her to be alone. And he sees his disciple, the one in the Gospel of John, it says, the one whom Jesus loved, and... Um, It's his special one. It's John. And he doesn't want him to be abandoned either. He doesn't want him to be orphaned. And so in that uh, very short verse, we hear Jesus, who is moved with love and compassion, gives them to one another. He gives them to one another with the spirit of adoption. With his words... A new family is formed. A new family is formed. I have obviously uh, thought a lot more about the meaning of adoption over these last six plus years as our family has been formed and reformed by the wonder and joy and profound complexity of adoption as we have welcomed Three of our six little grand boys have come into our family through adoption. I have found myself growing more and more resistant to the use of the word adoption about adopt a highway or adopt a whale or adopt an elephant, both things which we have done in our lives, by the way. Um, Because it seems here what Jesus is doing and what Paul is writing about in terms of the spirit of adoption is that it is permanent, It goes to our very essence of who we are. It is not a random act or something that you can no longer send your money for or do your trash pickup or whatever. It transforms you and, and the family and the world. We are not family because of blood, although that is significant. We are all, we are all family because of love, because of love. Now, there are so many powerful stories about adoption, and I am very respectful that those stories can only be shared by the individuals and the families. But I came across a story this last week as I was uh, searching As I was searching for stories about adoption and what that kind of love does in our lives, I came across a story that was actually uh, from a sermon 2014 by Episcopalian priest. Uh, His name is Reverend Stacy Sauls. He puts his family's story about adoption in the context of those words from Paul. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. So I want to share with you the family story of the Sauls. And it goes like this. The spirit of adoption is something I know a little about. And here's how I learned. 31 years ago, my wife Ginger and I were in the process of completing the home study process for the adoption of our first child. We had had all the interviews. The social worker had come to visit our house. It was, by the way, one of only three times in my adult life that I've ever cleaned the oven. I don't know why. (laughs) 
I don't know why I thought this, but I thought our caseworker would be checking to, checking to see if our oven was clean. But that, it, but that is what the words home study conjured up in my mind. The final interviews had come. These were to be with Ginger and me separately. I assumed the reason for that is that if one of us had not really wanted to go through with the adoption, we could bring a halt to the process without having to reveal the complete truth to our spouse. In our case, we were both as committed and anxious in every sense as ever. I was to have my interview first. And I promised to stop at a payphone, yes, that was before cell phones, to call Ginger and tell her what the social worker had asked me on my way back to the office. I did. And Ginger, in turn, was to call me when her interview, scheduled late in the afternoon, was complete. The time of Ginger's interview came and went. There was no call. I waited and waited. No word. I began to get concerned. My anxieties ran rapid. I feared that the social worker had completed Ginger's interview and had said something like Ginger would make a wonderful parent that I was a complete bozo who had tried to trick her into thinking that we had a clean oven. I imagined Ginger crying because of the disappointment and was too upset to call me. Finally, at about 5.30, Ginger arrived at my office door. She had red, puffy eyes. She'd clearly been crying. I thought my worst fears were confirmed. Instead, however, she stepped in and said, you have a son. And she pulled out a picture of a Korean baby boy. We know him as Andrew. And at that point, I started to cry. It was all I could do. People from the office came to see if I was all right. It was very embarrassing. Because it turns out that the social worker's last question to Ginger, as it had been to me, was, so are you ready for a baby? When Ginger responded, yes, the social worker said, good, because I have a referral for you. At which point, she pulled out a file and a picture. Ginger had, of course, met this news with tears of joy and, all, and in all the excitement, she couldn't remember exactly how to get to my office. She'd been driving around a long time, hoping to recognize something and to be able to find the way. Now, here's the rest of the story. Ginger is the emotional one in our family. She could cry at the drop of a hat. Happy or sad make no difference. Tears were appropriate for any occasion, but not so for me. Up until that point in our lives together, I had never cried, not once. I didn't think I had it in me. But when the news of Andrew came, the floodgates broke open. I started to cry, and as hard as I might, I couldn't stop. I would think I had myself under control, and then we would try to call someone to tell them the news and I would be prepared to speak, but when someone answered the phone, I would start up again. I would have to hand the phone back to Ginger. I was reduced to nothing but tears. Families are formed in all kinds of ways. Families are divided in more ways than that. Some families are displaced by war, by violence, or by poverty. Some families are reformed through the spirit of adoption. However, our families come together. We are a family made real by the love of God. Our son, Andrew, and later his brother, came to complete our family. That's what happened for us. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. Now all of us have an opportunity to learn what that's all about. And it may, and it may well reduce us to tears. A family story of being formed by adoption. A reminder that tears are good. And if you, like me, felt this morning just looking at the screen and those families and those women and what they have met, you may also have been reduced to tears. And going forward, can you claim that spirit of adoption for ourselves? But not just for ourselves, 
but for others, for others everywhere. Let us pray. Oh God, we are humbled. We're humbled that you have adopted us, claimed us forever, that your love is enough. Thank you for loving us like a good parent, even when we sin, even when we wander away, even when we need correction, even when and especially when we need redemption. Thank you. And as we claim this for ourselves, as we claim this for ourselves, might we claim it for others and might we share it with others. Your love, your adoption, your grace. Amen. Mm. So we really have prayed all morning, right, together. And as we uh, bring up our joys and concerns, we do continue to give thanks for the wonder of love that we have known real here today. The flowers on the altar, the beautiful watering cans full of flowers are in honor of the uh, loved ones and loving mother presence of the Turnbulls and uh, the Menaces. We also this morning continue to pray for families that are separated, whether they are separated by uh, issues at the border, whether they're separated by, oh, so very many things. Um, we pray for them. We pray for those who are graduating, and I've heard this weekend lots of graduations going on in these next weeks, and for our young people that are making some really hard decisions in this really difficult day about going forward, and what does their future hold? So we, we pray for them. We continue to pray for families waiting for babies and expecting babies. Um, and we pray for all who grieve. So, again, let's go to prayer. We breathe in your goodness, O oh God. We thank you for the faces of those we love here and that have gone on. We thank you for ways that we have been adopted and the ways that our families have been formed through blood and birth, through love and care, friends taken in, I thank you for teachers and coaches and nurses and doctors. I thank you for custodians, maintenance people, nurses, aides, caregivers, grocery store workers, garden growers, truck drivers, People all around the world who work so that we might have all the goods that we have. Oh God, we are humbled by all of this. And we commit ourselves to peace and justice and love and care for all. Forgive us, oh God, when we have held on to what we needed to let go of whether it be a prejudice or a grudge or literally resources. Forgive us and help us to live into your call in our lives that we might look like Jesus. And now hear us as we pray in his name, the prayer that he first taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so before I send you forth, I am... Uh, want to let you know that at each door there's a basket that's got a little gift for all moms and all women. So you don't have to be a mom to pick one up. Um, Cindy had, um, Cindy Bland put these together and it says, many women do noble things, but you excel them all. It's from Proverbs 31 and it has a little piece of chocolate on it. So um, please all you women pick one up on your way out. Next Sunday is the last, well, we celebrate Ascension Sunday next Sunday, and it's the last Sunday to order your geranium. Uh, the geraniums will be up at the altar for Pentecost Sunday on the 23rd. Uh, following the service, if you would like to take yours home, that would be fine. Uh, the rest of them will be going outside and being planted. And about the planting, a week from tomorrow, the 17th, uh, those who are able are going to be meeting outside at uh, 6 o'clock, and we are going to be mulching. So bring a shovel and some work gloves, and we're calling it a mulching party, right? There's almost anything that once you add the word party to it, it sounds a lot more fun than just saying you're going to be mulching. So um, that will be good. I think those are all my announcements for this morning. I'm going to send you forth here in a minute. And if you are able uh, to stand, though, please do so. Our closing hymn this morning is His Eye is on the Sparrow. And I have to say, I picked this because this was my mother-in-law's favorite hymn. So um, we remember Polly this morning as we sing, His Eye is on the Sparrow. eye is on the sparrow and he watches you and me so go in that knowledge go in peace amen
started with rock of mine comforting when I'd cry all in her own style then popcorn before my eyes turning frowns upside down into smiles the songs of the birds on high looking at the blue blue sky the wind as it rushes by then leading me guiding me walking beside me she helped me to walk in the light and she built my house on a rock and she lives all that she taught and she is all that a woman should be she put the music in me i knew he was really there he heard my child's prayer answering from up above she gave like a little stream and i was her sunbeam i felt my savior's love i saw her kneel and pray with our family every day listening to each whispered word gentle indeed and thought all the things jesus taught following prompting she heard and she lives to search ponder pray and she treetops on high and all creatures great and small i know god made them all because of her sweet lullabies and she's like a star shining bright and helps me to choose the right and she gives me the hope of a life yet to be she put the music in she is so good to me god the father he sent her to me and she taught me to lift up my voice and sing she put the music in me she put the music in me She put the music in me.